All right. Move it over here. All right, all right, all right. All right, all right, all right. Merry Christmas, YouTube. Oh, I hope you had a Merry Christmas because by the time you see this, it would have already gone. Anxiety. And a good new year. Yep, one of those two. No, it won't. No, yeah. it won't. It'll be coming out this weekend. The video will be two weeks. Oh, yeah, or a week. <laughs> Next week. Yep, yeah, no. It'll come out on Christmas, won't it? Yeah, it's not coming out Christmas Day. <laughs> Why not? Do it. <laughs> I guarantee I'll do you. It. That's not happening. You reschedule it. I keep losing my mouth. I could do that, couldn't I? Yes. Don't be lazy. <laughs> right, okay. Ouch. Uh, video is Just recording. Stab myself with a pen. Video is, recording. Video is recording. Say hello to the tube, people. Tubes are hello. Greetings, tubes. Tubers. Uh, input one. Uh, where recording. Is audio. Armed. And record. Recording audio. Spaceman. Recording audio. Raw, raw, raw. Remove from the top. There we go. Do 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 do. Ha ha ha! Okay, that's fine. Ah la 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 la. Okay, that's recording. Recording. Should we clap? Three, two, one. Three. No, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> wait, that doesn't work. <laughs> Three, two, one. Okay, happy with that. Close enough. <laughs> It'll do. It'll do. Right. Uh, I shall give you a thumbs up when it's your time to talk. Cool. And then you don't really need to worry about it after that, do you? No, it's not really. Okay. You guys are so cute, tucked away in my little corner up there. I, I, You're staring at me from two different directions. It's really disconcerting. <laughs> Mm. <laughs> uh, blah, blah, blah. Right, okay, we're ready. Ready? Jennifer, ready? I'm good. Jeremy, ready? Okay, music in three, two, one. Hello, guten tag, and welcome to a very special Christmas edition of Cereal Viewing. Not the show where we view wheat-based breakfast meals, but where the cereal waits patiently as our lives are sucked away by the intrepid wonderment that is children's television. Rolling onto the fantastical couch this morning is the ever-charming level 46 bard, Henry. Hello! <laughs> Along with the level something-something barbarian Jennifer, who promises not to rage and murder us all on today's show. Broad soul. <laughs> Speaking of which, this episode subject, if you haven't already guessed, is Dungeons and Dragons. Yay! Originally airing before between the years of 1983 and 85 for a whopping 27 episodes, the show focuses on a group of six friends who are transported into the titular realm of D&D, following their adventures as they try and find a way home with the help of their guide, the Dungeon Master. In this episode, the wizard of the group, Presto, is tricked by Wenger into conjuring up a horde of fire-breathing dragons to threaten the town of Helix. The party must rescue Pr Presto and save Helix before it is too late. So, my trepid adventurers, you walk into a tavern. <laughs> Ahead of you is the barman, drying out a well-worn tankard with what looks like the filthiest rag you have ever seen. As you approach the counter and take a seat on one of the nearby stools, the grim bartender looks up at you with a glimmer of intrigue and asks, Have you ever played Dungeons and Dragons before? <laughs> uh, I rolled a natural 20 for charisma and now I'm married to the bartender. <laughs> <laughs> Which is so have you guys seen the show before? Have you played Dungeons and Dragons? What's going on? What is this? Who so am I? I'm Jeremy. What is Dungeons and Dragons? I don't think I've ever heard of it before. <laughs> um, yes, I have heard of the show. I remember, I remember watching it. In fact, I would probably cite this as one of my influences into my gaming life. Really? Yeah. That deep? Yeah. It was uh, the right the right thing, one of the right things at the right time. 
Uh, yes, it's quite influential probably for many people. Jennifer, have you played Dungeons & Dragons before? Um, <laughs> I might have dabbled just a little bit. Hmm. Just a little bit. What's Maybe your experiences yeah. with this show? Uh, with this show, I remember watching it. Uh, I remember loving it. Um, <laughs> and yes, uh, and it brought back some painful memories because it, they never get home. So Yes, they sad. never get home. They well, they might do. Home. But we'll we'll come to that in a minute. Well, okay. <laughs> not in this TV. Well, in this, in fact, actually, I think in one episode they kind of end up back in the fair, but something happens and they have to come back. Otherwise, Venga, Ven yeah, I think it's Venga follows them or something. I, vaguely, God, I remember. Maybe something. Henry, do you know? No, nope, no idea. We do need to clear something. <laughs> Is his name Venga or Venja? Well, I say Venga, Venga. but I it's heard like Venger. it's vengeance. Yeah, I heard Venger. So, but yeah. I think it's funny because like Wenger. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, did anything look familiar to you two in this show, through D and D or through other cultural references? Uh, acrobat isn't a class. <laughs> it isn't in our edition. <laughs> it isn't. It wasn't in first edition either. <laughs> it wasn't either. There, yeah, no, <laughs> no, you're right. Uh, he could have homebrewed it, you know. Uh, Tiamat is not as scary as she's supposed to be. Yeah, that's true. Because she's supposed yeah, to be also she's... just a big dragon in this with many heads. Big of but she's she's a random spawn at level one. So <laughs> yeah. she's not going to be as scary as she is at level she 20. Should... Tiamat should not be. That's what I mean. Tiamat's an end game boss. She's an end campaign yeah. boss. Yeah, that she's was not... one of my questions. You guys have kind of beaten me to the punch, but... Uh, bonus points if you could tell me who Tiamat is in D and D. Uh, I've no idea. I don't remember. Yeah, no. Uh, That's too deep for us. Yeah, I, I'm sure I once knew, but. <laughs> okay, she's queen of the dragons. She's queen of the Makes... chromatic dragons, the bad guy dragons. Makes and sense. She's actually a god. Well, this is it. So why is she just <laughs> harassing a bunch mm. of level two characters? <laughs> yeah, yeah, hundred percent. And why does she look a bit like a cat? And act like a cat. And have a fat <laughs> ass. Make some weird noise. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, very strange. Tiamat's but, Tiamat's yeah. chonker in this. <laughs> At least they put Tiamat in, though, being almost the mascot of D&D. &D. I think they had to. It was kind of... Yeah. It was. It had to happen. Yeah. Although why she wasn't the main bad guy, I'm not quite sure. But maybe they were trying to encourage people to create their own bad guys who are, you know, young and picking it up after watching the show. Yeah, I mean, I think you're thinking into it too much. I don't think Probably. I think it was a um some. It, I, I don't know. This part of me thinks that it was somebody played Dungeons and Dragons and wanted it to be out there, so they thought, well, let's make a yeah. game of it. Okay, but also in the eighties, Dungeons and Dragons was really popular. So with the nerds, yeah, the, you know. <laughs> The late night, uh, late eighties, nineties, it was like let's take something popular and thrash it out. But then there's also the cynical in me is that they, the sales were a bit low, so they thought let's make a cartoon so we can boost the sales for Dungeons and Dragons. You're probably a bit correct in that because as the second edition came out, because you had advanced Dungeons and Dragons, which is for the first edition, and second edition came out and it wasn't as popular as advanced, so maybe they're trying to boost the sales. Um, with it there, you're, you're looking at this all wrong. Tier mm -hmm. Tier Matt was added by the games master, the dungeon master, uh, as to as balance. So <laughs> you've got you've got this party with a bunch of level ones with uh, fairly crappy magical items, which is you expect at level one, and then you've got big yeah. bad the big bad Venger, who is obviously more powerful than them. <laughs> so uh, Tier Matt's there as balance. Yes. <laughs> so if the party's, She's the wild card. Yeah, if the party starts to struggle, uh, right, Tiamat shows up and kicks Venger's ass and everyone saves the day. There we go. Mm. It, it makes plenty of sense. Yep. A lot of the ones I'm reading at the moment, they have that in there. They have some random wild card. So. Yes. So, Jeremy, as somebody coming at this after the fact, because you obviously didn't watch it when it first came out. Yeah. Mm. Um, <laughs> and you've played Dungeons and Dragons... And now you're watching a cartoon about it. What do you mm. think of it? 
Yeah, I'm, I'm in a really weird, unique position coming at this as someone who only, in the grand scheme of Dungeons and Dragons, recently started playing it, um, and only know it through the most current version of it is. Um, it it looks a bit almost gimmicky compared to how I imagine I would play Dungeons and Dragons. It's very much an interesting take so a lot of the stuff i don't know the older editions you know that's what was going to be one of my questions to you guys did, did you know growing up in school anybody who played dungeons and dragons oh, yeah. and were they nerds and did you bully them <laughs> i did yes <laughs> not really nerds because <laughs> even back then you it was everybody else and then those that were popular um and then uh, no no uh, i didn't i when I was in school, I didn't know anyone who played Dungeons Dragons. Mm -hmm. We cut our teeth on the original fighting fantasy, not the books. Well, actually, that's a lie. We started with the books. We we sat, got a little group together, and we went through the books together. And then there is a there is an actual role playing game, a fighting fantasy role playing game. If you don't know what fighting fantasy is, go Google it. It's Ian Livingstone and Steve Jackson, bunch of choose your own adventure books. But they actually created a an actual role playing game out of it. So we were playing that. And then we kind of we went from that to Dungeons and Dragons after I'd left school, but we very briefly touched Dungeons and Dragons before moving on onto other mm. other games. But saying that, this episode plays exactly like an advanced Dungeons and Dragons scenario. Yes, in it in that it is, it's quite. There's some fairly chaotic things going on. Uh, the group mm -hmm. are arguing. Yeah, <laughs> um, they don't really know what they need to do. The dungeon master keeps showing up and pointing them in the right direction, giving them really <laughs> heavy clues, which they get wrong. Yep. Uh, the original Dungeons Dragons was nearly always in a dungeon, whereas Advanced you started mm. spreading out into the world a bit more, like this. So yeah, I even but one of my notes says this story is not that great, but it is. A, this is exactly what I would expect from a an Advanced Dungeons Dragons or a first yeah. edition Dungeons Dragons scenario. Where you're running through. <laughs> yeah, because I feel like Dungeons and Dragons nowadays is incredibly different. If you take the fact that it's different editions and rules out, it's still played incredibly different to how it used to be. Yeah. It used to be, like you say, a dungeon crawler, a game where you would. The character development was always second to just progression and playing the game nowadays a lot of people try to focus more on character development and relationships and the actual role-playing aspect mm -hmm. of the game and combat it often takes a sideline um I saying also, that there uh, there weren't that many puzzles in this one apart from the fact that the bad guy was hidden sorry go on no i was gonna say that um i think that uh and I'm probably going to get shot down for this, that <laughs> perhaps in the 80s, it was just um, it was just a game, but it was a highbrow game. It was, you know, yeah. it wasn't a game that everybody... It's not like Monopoly, everybody played that at Christmas. But it was just a game. Whereas I have the last 10, 15, 20 years is that Dungeons & Dragons has come a bit... It's become a bit elite. <laughs> um you have to know what you're doing you have to know what you're talking about um oh, oh, what's the word i just i just thought of the word that um you're cliquey <laughs> yeah yeah i think so Maybe. yeah it's like it's like in the 80s you were perhaps ostracized for playing it whereas mm -hmm. now you it's ostracize just... people because they're not in your gang who are not playing Dungeons and dragons yeah yeah, that's very much. It's, it's very much become what the cool kids. It's well, slowly becoming what the cool kids play versus what the losers played. <clears throat> and yeah, I don't think it's like at that level where you know everybody, especially people who grew up hating on it, is is getting interested in it. But it's definitely becoming a lot more normalized. Mm -hmm. I think that's partly to do how the games evolved. We should pre briefly mention a role-playing game, if you haven't got any idea <laughs> what this really is. you really don't have any idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah if you is a, in a box. d and is, is the, the quintessential role-playing game, the, the one that started it all. But it's where you create a character and you embody that character and you play through 
any kind of world doesn't have to be fantasy based or lord of the rings-esque um and you you know could, could progress through it as if it was a game any other game just like a video game but you also you play that character it's fun give it a go <laughs> uh, go to your local game shop and join a night yeah other role-playing games are available yeah. yeah. <laughs> um. So let's move on to the theme song, if there was one. Yeah. <laughs> so there is. There is a bit of. So there isn't really a theme that you because you've got the the jingly jangly music when they're telling the story at the beginning. Yeah. But there is a theme all the way through in the background, especially when mm -hmm. the dramatic music come on, comes on. Sorry, not when the dramatic music comes on. When it gets to the drama. So like when they the, when they're in the battle yeah there's a the general rocks. score that kind of comes through yeah. as if the dungeon master has clicked on a fantasy playlist on yeah. YouTube and just let it play for 3 hours yeah, yeah. but it's that <laughs> background when they're in the battle scene that I yeah. really love really um yeah it um I'd forgotten about it until I was listening on here and I was like oh yeah that's I really love it's just this little bit when they're in the battle scenes and it's in the background hmm. um so I wanted to um I wanted to have a look at this beforehand but I didn't get a chance to. Apparently a full orchestral version of the series theme song. Um again if there was one. There is in the end credits but yeah, it, it was composed by a guy called Johnny Douglas and it was released um on his album. Uh basically yeah, I I wanted to hear it. Uh, Johnny Douglas did uh, he did the um the theme songs for the Spider-Man uh, and he did the Incredible Hulk. He did GI Joe. He did the Transformers um, theme as well. I or well, the uh, music anyway. I'm I'm going to dump on it a little bit because I don't even I didn't notice it while it was on. <laughs> like I didn't notice the score. What? I didn't notice the music in the back when it was fighting. Oh yeah, me neither. I couldn't. <laughs> I listened to this less than what an hour ago. I couldn't. If you played me the theme, if you played me three songs now, I wouldn't be able to pick out which one was from this show. Yeah, it was, it was just there. It was it, there was zero, nothing memorable about it. But saying that, when the end credits played, I did have a, a flashback to my youth because uh, when that really? music, when that music played, uh, this was the end programming for the kids' TV in an afternoon after school. This was the uh... last thing on in the evening. So once that music played, it was dinner time. <laughs> and that, i remember that i remember the i remember that music playing Whoa. it's dinner now <laughs> almost borderline ptsd yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well um i mean likewise i i didn't notice it too much um if i really paid attention it but i think that's good you know it was it was it's a very kids cartoon they're not going to care too much. It just kind of emphasizes the situation. It was very Conan-esque. It was just 1980s, mid-1980s kids show, theme, theme score. Um, uh, yeah. So this was actually created as a co-production between TSR and Marvel Studios, Marvel Production really? Studios. Yeah, Cause which T I had no idea. TSR were the original, <laughs> um, the original creations as creators of Dungeons and Dragon. Well, Gary Gygax was, mm. but he that TSR was the company I believe that they set up. I think so. Uh, that sounds familiar. Um, until Wizards of the Coast bought it, bought everything in the nineties, I think. Yeah, two mm thousands. -hmm. Um, and the Japanese company to Toye, I think hey. we've spoken we've, about we, them. We before. have had Toye before, yes, extensively. They did the animation. Lots of similarities, I, you know, lots of the same people working on the same shows back in that time. I rose tinted glasses and all that, but I remember the animation being way better than it really is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I just yeah, look at the uh, Dungeon Masters. Exact, yeah. The Dungeon Master's head in the opening theme is just like uh, something happened to him as a child <laughs> growing up. <laughs> He's got his head trapped in an uh, elevator door. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. I, to be honest, I remember... I remember the the opening credits telling more of the story, mm -hmm. uh, how they got there. I don't know if it changes later on. Um, I remember the animation being way better, and I remember the stories being better. Yeah. 
Uh, how can the credits tell you more story? That is the story of how they get there. I, d I they don't go into the fairground, it disappears, they get stuck, they meet the dungeon master, they meet the dragon, he gives them the he gives them their um uh items of sk power. Their skills, whatever they are. No classes. Classes. Um and then they go into a wow dungeon instance and fight <laughs> Although... the darn dragon. As I said, acrobat and cavalier uh, were not classes. Yeah, yeah. There was cavalier no there, as well. There, there, there was no analog for acrobat. I mean, the the cavalier is obviously a fighter. Was the thief called thief, or was it still rogue back then? Uh, I think they were called thieves. I think it was thief. Yeah, I think so too. I remember hearing something like that, but I I know they're called rogues now. Um. Also, rangers. Well, in fifth edition. Oh yeah, Rangers didn't that, exist. They are not that good. <laughs> I don't know. It was I think he's Archer um back then. Oh, oh do you know, I I've completely drawn a blank. I can't remember if Rangers were originally in You the... have a look. Have a look. No, it's fine. But um <laughs> yeah, yeah, not that important. <laughs> well, I I've, my books are buried at the, the back over there somewhere. I'm on oh yeah, you have the original. I have the original you. first edition Dungeons and Dragons books, and but I'm not gonna That's... Just... I'm not tearing them out of the thing. <laughs> yeah, that's that's never prying and being pried from Henry's cold dead heart. No, that's one of my prized <laughs> possessions. That is. Um, so, is there much point in talking about merchandise? <laughs> <laughs> uh, no. Because no, I don't think there is. A, has there been any? Uh, yeah, you lunch know, boxes, like, I, I mean, masks. I'm being sarcastic. I remember having mm -hmm. some two-inch tall action figures. Of Avenger and the, I think, Cavalier and the Ranger, I think. Wanger. Wanger. <laughs> Aye, Avenger. Mm. Um, yeah, so I had, I had, I had those. Uh, rubbers, erasers, stationery, pencil cases, <laughs> T-shirts, mm -hmm. uh, Frisbees. Well, yeah. Um... <laughs> the, I've got a list of the merch in front of me. So, ironically, there was a board game released um, awesome. by TSR in 1984. Uh, it's called Quest for the Dungeon Master because he's a git and keeps disappearing and he's honestly sadistic. I have words. Um, I, have, I have thoughts on yeah. the Dungeon Master. We'll, we'll get there. We'll yeah, get there. Yeah. But, um, it was inspired by the episode In Search of the Dungeon Master. Um, I, I assume he goes missing. Um, well, they get, every in which five, the every Dungeon Master is, <laughs> is captured by... He up saying, makes them, do the, makes them do the quest mm -hmm. and then he just turns up at the end. Which that's not very Dungeons and Dragony. It's pretty um, dungeon mastery though. There's, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I I did put in my notes that there was some definitely some nat a lot of natural twenties <clears throat> being rolled, and there was definitely some dungeon master mastery fudgery going on. Yeah, fudgery he definitely rolled. messed with the uh, rules a bit. Um, well, um, the, it's anyway. So it takes place that the dungeon master is captured by War Duke and frozen in magic crystal. Um, and the kids have to rescue him before the bad guy Chris Traeger gets there, and Brazilian company. <laughs> um, the Brazilian company grow released a Portuguese language version of the game, so in 1993. So it still had some cult. The, the show had cultural impact in the 90s. I, it's one if of those were... shows that people of our generation, again, people of minor gender generation. If you mentioned the TV show to them, even people who've never. That was it. That's the only ever exposure to Dungeons Dragons. Will remember it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you guys always say I didn't realize that the theme song. Just going back to that because I forgot to make this point. The theme song is just the introduction. You don't get an introduction in the first episode at all, which, which is weird. And I'm like, you don't need what? it. But really? I did. I did have to question whether I was watching the first episode or not. Yeah, because they kind of. They, they you go from they're dumped in this world and then they're wandering around and then they know too much and i must mm -hmm. put something in my notes what did i put in here um oh yeah um did the characters play D, &D before they played and got into sucking here because they know too much about like the dungeon yeah the whole D and D, like that's a good point yeah it's it you know they that you know they meet there's the team at yeah. I mean, I know they meet her right at the beginning, because obviously that's part of the titles. But um, there's kind of like there's like there's a little bit of a chunk missing between yeah, the titles. I, 
I and think then you... them wandering around. Mm. And, and, yeah. and I know that they're teenage kids, but they're entirely too comfortable with the situation then. They're yeah. freaking out. <laughs> yeah. They are... Um... Like... I think the only thing that could have alluded to this being the first episode was the fact that they had that whole thing with uh, Traeger and the, the White Rabbit. And why he, um, like, they, they didn't know how to spot him before, but maybe he doesn't have a White Rabbit in any of the other episodes, I don't think. Because well, that was the obvious. Hair. No, no, the white hair, sorry, white hair, yeah. Yeah, that's how they, no, you know, it's, there's always different ones. But, you see, yeah. um... Vega is Venga, sorry. He's my second. He's my second favorite bad guy in all of the cartoons. <laughs> the first so who's one you... is Mr. Sinister. Yeah, okay, I thought he's so. I could... the best bad guy ever, and I, I can't understand why he is not being brought out. I don't feel like Venkman is a good enough <laughs> um, bad guy um, compared to like Skeletor. Or someone. Oh no no, <laughs> Venga is. I can understand why he's not being used in anything else. He's just. He's so camp. He's just like he's got this one horn, and then he's got a cloak. And he's then... a, yeah, he is pretty camp. He's a bit first Avengers Loki in that he really wants yeah. to be a bad guy, but it just never quite happens for him. Yeah, he just doesn't yeah. seem threatening. Does he? No. I don't know, yeah. something about his get up. He's the fact he's scared of a cat dragon. Like <laughs> that thing. If it's if she sat on you. You're dead. You're dead. Oh, That's yeah. what he's scared That's of. True. He's scared of getting chomped. That's natural twenty. <laughs> natural twenty ass attack. Yeah. <laughs> um. So there were many, many, many books published uh, about this, about the series. Um. There was Dragonez. I uh, forgive me for pronouncing this badly. Dragonez E. <laughs> <laughs> Masmoras, <laughs> um, a comic book adaptation um, of all the 27 episodes by Comics Forum, which was a, a Spanish publisher um, licensed by TSR. There was Pick a Path to Adventure. Um, choose Your Own Adventure. These, uh, there was yeah, six game books written from the point of view of the children, and there was a Choose Your Own Adventure. Um, but also like was through the eyes of the younger brother, or well, Eric, Hang on, wait. Eric. Through Eric's book, gave the protagonism to his younger brother Michael. So oh. it was weird. Michael anyway. was the barbarian. Right? They were. I th no, no that's I'm Bobby. Here. I think they were trying to put another character. Right. In. Right. Okay. Um. Yeah. It doesn't really make a lot of sense. I didn't get any of the names apart from Presto. <laughs> yeah. And that's Presto. Only, and, that's only, oh. and that's only because it's a stupid name. <laughs> Fred, isn't, isn't Velma, Bobby, the kids. Daphne, Scooby, <laughs> Scooby, Scra well, Scrappy Doo, the Unicorn. Surely got Uni's name. Yeah. Right, I, 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 I go there we go. Uh, see, see, I have to do. It. <laughs> it, I agree you, with you. If Henry. you've listened to this podcast before, you know I'm not a fan of comedic sidekicks. I, and apologise for language, but I fucking hate that unicorn <laughs> with a deep and abiding mm. passion. Even when I was, however old I was, 13, I hated that unicorn with its <laughs> sounds all the way through. It used to, it was like nails on a chalkboard. She served <laughs> zero purpose apart from just be. I don't know. At the time, I thought, oh, they've put that unicorn in there for the girls, which I know is quite, I know is quite sexist. I don't know who that was for. It was just annoying and didn't need to be there. Yeah. I, I three also... times. Sorry, three times in my notes. Oh my god, <laughs> I hate that unicorn. I hate that fucking unicorn. I hate the unicorn. <laughs> yep. I, I, wrote much, that... I didn't have as much hate for the unicorn, but I felt that useless. But I know that my little sister, when we used to watch it, she loved the unicorn. Oh, it's just. So, but well, it, she was a lot younger. I mean, she was a good. She was only eight. Mm. eight and she must have been what? I, I wrote many a time about it. Um, not quite as much content as for it as uh, Henry has. It's but not a strong enough word. I, uh, the first thing I had said as soon as it came on on screen, I said, "I already want that horse dead." Um, and then uh, when it was trying to do the echo, I was like, "Thank God, it didn't have an an echo." But then it did it again, and it pissed me off. <laughs> the fucking around on uh, the ladder. You've got no opposable thumbs. Yeah. How are you getting up that ladder, you idiot? Leave it behind. <laughs> Leave it behind. They did, they did Cook it. it behind. Let it run away. <laughs> they were they were wandering around complaining. They've got no food. Cook it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, honestly, I really. It was... 
I really, really despise. In fact, I, w- I will go far as to say that Uni is my most despised character from any children's TV show ever. Wow. Even more than Schnarf. <laughs> Even more than Schnarf. I would become best buds with Schnarf than spend five seconds with that fucking unicorn. <laughs> what about uh, Wessel Gummidge? No, best buds. <laughs> 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 oh, I, I, do you know what yeah we'll go for a beer with words we'll go with rather than spend look i'll hold that, you to that look at that unicorn more than once when we next go to a convention and someone's dressed as bloody words or gummies you have to take a picture with her oh no only <laughs> only if there's a uni around <laughs> but then i will dress up as the uni but then you'll, know, you'll know where i am because i'll be the one kicking the shit out of it <laughs> damping it to death jesus <sighs> Anyway, Moving there on. were also you, you had two UK annuals <laughs> of 1985 and 1987. I may have. Uh, the first those. featured seven original adventures, while the second only included three. But it it did include Comic Forum's adaptation of The Eye of the Beholder, which is a great song if you've never heard it. <laughs> um, there was also Marvel Summer Special 1987, which. Um, had an adaptation of the episode Prison Without Walls. There was Don John's Et Dragons, <laughs> which was in French. <laughs> I'm not even going to try anymore. Um, which is another six book collection similar to the first one. Um, and then there was a Forgotten Realms, The Grand Tour, with Jeremy Clarkson, James May, and Richard Hammond. It was a one shot comic book what? published by <laughs> TSO in 1996. <laughs> Features Wait. now adult protagonists. Still, sadly, living in the Dungeons and Dragons world. Oh. This time in the Forgotten Realms, which is the original Dungeons and Dragons world. Yep. And uh, apparently, Presto was seeking the apprenticeship with the uh, with Elminster the Sage, which probably means something to anybody who's a real fan of Dungeons and Dragons. I know the name. Yeah, yeah. I don't know the Forgotten Worlds very well. I only know it through offhand information that i'm trying right. to change this will be a throwback <laughs> anyone out there in the world can you remember do you remember dun uh, oh shit I can't dragon magazine it was published in the uk mm. and it was primarily a D uh focused magazine but it had all kinds of other weird mm. wacky rules in there and in there i remember this series i may still have a copy um where a reporter finger waggle reporter uh hmm. finds a device and hides in the stu- every once a week hides in the study of a wizard and while he's there another wizard shows up elminster i believe it was and then they have a hmm. talk about and then it's basically a article about the world of dungeons dragons and how things are how different works so it's a conversation between two wizards i'm fairly certain that one of those wizards was elminster ah okay dungeon magazine anyone else remember it Dungeon Dragon Dragon Magazine. It's Dragon Magazine. This is a man who can't remember shit, but can remember a magazine from the eighties. I may have read it recently. A story <laughs> in the eighties, and the people of the, the name of the people in the story. I may have read it recently. <laughs> I may not. I may just. Oh. I may be in a bit of a savant when it comes to things like that. <laughs> I may have just made it up. Oh, I could have just made it up. That is entirely possible. Well, I remember the comic, uh, at least the book that you've showed me, the uh, magazines. Yes, I've had those. I've had those magazines for twenty-five years, if not more. Twenty, twenty. That's a years. long time. Yes. Yeah. Longer got, than me. I've got other magazines that are older. Just ask Jennifer; she hates them. <laughs> so, get this. So, I just found this out. Um, in 2021, Wizards of the Coast announced a secret layer set for the Magic the Gathering uh, based <laughs> on the animated series. That's cool. I like that. Um, there's also, though, announced that a Magic the Gathering animated series will be broadcast on Twitch with directed by the Russo brothers Why and Netflix, Twitch? sorry. Sorry, it's streamed. Sorry, no, no, that, I got this wrong. It was. It's going to be on Netflix. Right. They are streaming this secret layer set on Twitch. Um, yeah, the Russo brothers have teamed up with Netflix and Magic the Gathering and creating this animated show, and it's going to come out next year. And I'm like, what the hell? It's a good time to be a nerd. I don't. I don't know how I feel about that. They're doing a new. They're doing a new movie of Dungeons and Dragons. Like, 
I did. You mean they're doing a movie? movie. We don't. We don't acknowledge that first yeah, one as being a Dungeons Dragons movie. That was oh, now. Sorry. I completely forget that exists every time, and I had it on video, and I watched it so much as a kid, but it was yeah. awful. Not only is it a bad <laughs> Dungeons and Dragons movie, it's just a bad movie. <laughs> yeah. That bad. It, it's was... not a bad Dungeons and Dragons movie. There's some interesting things in there that you could steal if you want. Jeremy wanted to. Irons in the it. It can't be that the bad. The acting was just dire. Yeah. <laughs> Jeremy, Irons, Jeremy, was... Jeremy Irons will chew the scenery and you, he doesn't care. He's just there for the money. He's there to have fun. Brilliant. Excellent. Yeah. No problem with her. The main character was just an annoying 90s teen. Uh, his mm-hmm. sidekick, Snails, was just. He, he was uni level bad. <laughs> and the whole tone of the movie was really weird because they were going for this fun adventure kind of thing and then one of the characters actually dies like proper car crash in the middle of the, the movie slow everything down mm-hmm. he's just died and it's just it's really jarring because it's not, it doesn't fit with the tone of the movie and then it used to creep me the hell out how he just died and yeah. the way he dies as well was really unsettling for me as a like growing man yeah, but it's got Thora Birch in it who? Thora Birch so- Birch. All right, A- actress of the nineties. Oh, <laughs> I joked in the She was she was fine, but it was like the queen. Okay, and then you look at what they did with dwarves, the representation of the dwarven race in Lord of the Rings, and then you look at the dwarf in this Lord Dungeons and Dragons movie, and it's just it's it's offensive to fantasy dwarves. <laughs> yeah. So let's not talk about it any further. Oh, no. Let me hate on it a bit more. It's a terrible movie. It's a terrible Henry, you've movie. You've got plenty of hate out. <laughs> you should go and watch it just to appreciate how bad a movie it is. So, um, last of the merch. Can I get to the last yes, of the merch? Yes, sorry. <laughs> so, the, they uh, did numerous commercials, weirdly licensed in Brazil. They really targeted to South America and, and Latin. Yeah, um, licensed for Brazilian live action television commercial. Released in 2019. Weird. To promote the launch of Renault's, Renault's Quid Outsider, which is an ugly looking car. Weird. Um, the commercial was shot in Salta in Argentina, in place near, near the Andes mountain range. Nice. But for some reason, the characters were licensed for it. Well, they to be do. honest, it's not a bad idea, given that the time. They do it with everyone else. They do it with the Jetsons and Scooby Doo and everyone else. Yeah. They, everyone's been licensed to do sell something. So, toys and collectibles. Now, this is a bigger one. All of them. Yep. An advanced Dungeons & Dragons toy line was produced by LGN in 1983. Um, It included original characters such as War Duke, Strongheart the Paladin, and the evil wizard, (laughs) Kellogg, who would later appear in campaigns for the basic editions of the role-playing game. None of the main characters of the TV series were included in the toy line, but a connection does exist as War Duke, Stronghold, and Kellogg each appeared in one episode of the series. Only in Spain and Portugal were PVC figures of the main characters produced, um, and a Brazilian company named Iron Studios were released, will release in 2019, so this is previous, an entire set of polystone collectible statues for the most of the Dungeons & Dragons cartoon characters, um, and they'll form a full diorama. Which is kind of cool. I wonder. Um, so, and in June to August, I don't know when this happened, but uh, PCS Collectibles Company uh, released two versions of Wagner in one to four scale, full, both fully sculpted polystone statues, hand painted. It's a real big thing that's kind of coming up. This sandstone sort of what well, mm-hmm. polystone models and like collectibles, just because they're really durable. Um. Uh, and there was a specific version that was created that was only limited to 400 pieces um, and another version which included uh, Wangers, uh, Loyal Henchman, the Shadow Demon, as well as the alternate swap out arm with a magical energy effect, which will be limited to 250 pieces. Ooh. Or was limited, I guess, because this is in the past. <laughs> but yeah, lots of crap. Basically, they milked it as you did with every cartoon in the 80s. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, they mm. were primarily vehicles to sell other crap. Yeah. I mean, Dungeons and Dragons still is. Well, yeah. <laughs> <That's true. laughs> um, yeah. 
So we've spoken about how much we hated some of the aspects of it. Let's just briefly speak about some of the things we liked about it. Maybe if there was anything. I told you. Apart from the bad guy, I really loved. Yeah. Yeah. I was a little obsessed with Tiamat when I was uh, younger. Tiamat was just the idea of Tiamat was the coolest thing ever. Um, well, yeah. I mean, I never, it, I was never a fan of Tiamat, but that may be just because I knew about it way before I got into Dungeons and Dragons, and I knew that it was the flagship. It just seemed like the logical thing to do. Same as I hate unicorns in the Dungeons and Dragons game, just because it seems way too obvious to put in. But yeah, that's my personal. Yeah, um, I liked the. What did I like? I like the fact, and it's one of the reasons why I like Dungeons & Dragons, in fact all of those types of games, is that the roles can be any gender, yep. literally. Anybody can be anybody, you know. You can, Like the little kid is the barbarian. Yeah. You know, um, you had the whiny, um, scaredy cat, um, spoiled brat. He's a cavalier, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and you've got the, um, you know, like captain of the sports team, the jock. He's actually a ranger. He's not. Mm. He's not the barbarian you would expect him to be. You know, and also the fact you had a. You've got a black girl in there. Mm-hmm. So she was. She's not only she's coloured, but she's a girl as well. You, you know, two of the main characters are female. Okay, yeah, predominantly they are white males, but. You still got them in there. There's, you know. Yes, they and they decided to sexualize her instead of the 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 white female. <laughs> uh, yes, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, but I mean, if you look at, uh, is it Bobby the barbarian? He's only wearing. He's only wearing. He's wearing, a, yeah, he's wearing he's a kid. He's wearing a uh, traditional barbarian uh, dress of a furry underpants and some leather. Yeah. 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 So it's not. It's not too out there, but yes. But then that's, you know, as long, you know, I've never cared how they dress my character as long as she has exactly the same armor value wearing a bikini <laughs> the opposite. as the guy who's wearing full armor. That's, that's you know, doesn't bother me. Game but. mechanics come first, people. <laughs> yeah. I want to look good, but I still want that armor yeah. value. If I was being forced to wear a bikini armor and it had shitty armor value, then I'd get pissy. Mm. But I'm quite happy looking good and having the same armor value. It doesn't bother me. There was a couple of points in the show that made me kind of chuckle. Um, making the cow was a little on the nose, but it, I still kind of found it funny. Like, you know, the fact that he was like, burger, cow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, like, I knew it was coming, but it was still pretty good. Um, and there was a couple other points. I found that the amount they spoke was actually quite good. The The interaction between the characters was better than a lot of, like, similar time. I, I, um, I agree with you on that one. That was one of the points I was going to make, is that everyone gets to say something. Yeah. And everything that they get to say is valid. It's to, it's yeah, not it's just relevant, it's not just like... talking for the sake of it. It's a good I mean, interaction. Yeah, Eric was a was a bit of a idiot, but that was his character. But he was meant to be. <laughs> yeah, he's meant to be annoying. Yeah, yeah he's the rich, irritating kid. And making um, making on that note, um, I think yeah. it was a nice choice that they made him the fighter. He was the mm-hmm. he was the guardian, which is usually you'd expect something the blonde haired, blue eyed leader of the football yeah. team. As Jen said, the yeah. ranger, that kind of character, I would have expected him to be the cavalier. Maybe yeah, having yeah. a cow, maybe having a cowardly ranger wouldn't fit in with the story. But I think it was a good choice. I think it was a nice choice. Mm-hmm. I liked um, the fact that the ranger was also forgettable, just like in every D and D game. <laughs> <laughs> also, fun side note: as soon as um, uh, Wanker stood up and said, um, "You know me as Vegna." I was like, you know me as Optimus Prime. I wrote it was Peter down. Cullen. It was Peter <laughs> Cullen. I wrote down. Yeah, it sounds was. like a Decepticon. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I no, saw it just Cullen. before watching it. I was like, damn. It. I wanted to. Yeah, I could have heard that. <laughs> yeah, but doesn't he do half the? Uh, uh, he does half the uh, Peter, um, Winnie the Pooh characters as well, doesn't he? I think maybe. Yeah. I think I, he does it. Does he do it somewhere? 
Probably. But yeah, he does Optimus Prime. But he yeah. Optimus Prime comes out occasionally in uh, uh, Winger's voice. Yeah, and I, um, I wrote down vagina. Vagina sounds like a Decepticon. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah, and he also sounds like Ironhide a bit sometimes, and like, <laughs> yeah, I just it was cool. So there was some contro controversy hey. surrounding this show. Um, a final unproduced episode, as we've spoken about, would have served as both a conclusion to the story as well as a reimagining of the show had the series been picked up for a fourth season. Because there was three seasons they split over the twenty-seven episodes for some reason. Um, however, the show was cancelled before the episode was made. The script has since been published online and was performed as an audio drama as a nice. special feature on the uh, BCI Eclipse DVD edition of the series. Not only that, a fan-made animated version of the finale appeared online in 2020. And I want to go watch it. <laughs> I'd be interested uh, like, to watch I'm that, yeah. curious. Yeah, you should watch, this after, watch that after it. How much did it bug you? as kids watching the finale i don't remember the finale. i was surprised when you said there how many episodes there were i thought there was double that mm. i don't remember oh, i don't indication. I, I don't remember i remember it just burbling on for years i remember no conclusion to it <laughs> that's that's exactly why. It. it was yeah. always it never finished for me yeah it was always really disappointing they yeah. never finished they never got home which always annoyed me. But I vaguely, I do vaguely remember one of the episodes where they were really close to getting home. Well, or something happens and I can't remember that they, they have to come back because Veng, other Veng, other way Veng, or they got, they get to the fairground and then they had, yeah. And it's, it's, it's a choice they have to make. They don't get, they don't get to stay or something. I vaguely remember it. Um, Do you guys want me to tell you? Cause the script was, published yeah, ages ago it, it was yeah. like you, you want me to tell you the plot of the original yeah, ending it. so it was changed a little bit for the fan made one um they decided to change a few things make it less open ended but basically they were going to establish that the dungeon master was in fact VGA's dad <laughs> and his, the it, obviously he has a sister later in the series as well um so yeah they were going to establish that and basically they had to, I think the Dungeon Master had to leave or something. There was a reason why they either Wignut killed him or something. Um, but basically they had, they, they did end up in the real world, but then they had to choose between coming back and staying in the real world in order to save the fantasy world or just be normal kids again. Kind of like a Jumanji yep. thing, I guess. Um, but yeah. So I'm curious as the fan made one. Apparently they stuck they stayed pretty much mostly to the original script. It's just Actually Jen, saying yeah. are you saying about one where you thought they, they got back, I I vaguely remember um the barbarian getting really upset because Uni can't go with them. Yeah. Because yeah, exactly. he, yeah. because Uni can't I remember that. Or it's that just, does it's sound just come to me, yeah. So yes, maybe I do remember them going back at some point. Because mm. I think he tries to stay or he tries to smuggle Yudi in and it doesn't work. I don't remember. Something like that. I don't know. Well, um, so, apart from that, uh, there was more controversy surrounding the show and that was, uh, there was the level of violence, um, apparently, at the time. What? You know, this was the time period where the parents were putting arms and legs wait, up wait. in the air. Was this in America? It this can't was in America. Be the yeah, yeah, yeah no, no. Controversial for American children. UK television. kids were used to grey and chill. Where's <laughs> yeah. the garbage? I mean, where's the garbage? Was I mean, the... abused by his woman. Uh, yeah. It just. Wait, that's what we got all the time. We give mm. British kids. Even, even He Man. He Man runs towards the screen and punches the viewer. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? I mean, like they they made Conan the Barbarian a kids show. <laughs> like, <laughs> I mean. That's one that... apparently one of the scripts was nearly shelved because just because the characters actually created a plan and contemplated killing the villain, that um, it might that... have been the way they spoke about it, or that surprises yeah. me in one regard, in that it's a kids show and it's it, it's no more violent yeah. than anything else. But it also doesn't surprise me because I rem I don't rem remember it clearly, but I 
the sheer moral panic that swapped America, swamped America based on the Dungeons Dragons franchise, um, but specifically the mm. role playing game. But even in eighty three, that was still rumbling on that D and D was satanic and uh, yes. it was all rituals, and your children are going to get eaten by the devil. And we love. And then it became Pokemon. And, and yeah, I mean, it was, but it was <laughs> huge. It was ridiculous. Mm-hmm. I mean, I you if you didn't live through it, I can't explain. I mean, I didn't live through it. I don't really remember it. I was over here and it wasn't really a thing. But having read about it, it was a bizarre witch hunt against D&D. And I can see that extending to properties like this. The natural progression of those things is ridiculous. The fact that, you know, you had Dungeons and Dragons, you had uh, goth music, you had like... I wasn't rock music. Pokemon. Heavy, rock music. It was rock music, heavy well, and, music. and to be oh, like, I mean, yeah. Back with Beatles. If you played I'm just thinking of a progression. Say, yeah. Oh, we love Satan. We love Satan. We love Satan. Right we love Satan. <laughs> yeah. Um, you, like uh, heavy metal, mm-hmm. uh, Pokemon, uh, WoW, um, GTA, all COVID. these games. Like, COVID. and now, like, probably <laughs> things like, yeah. <laughs> covid <laughs> but yes Pokemon, i i saw a thing uh on i think it was reddit the other day about some preacher standing up and claiming how satanism is inside oh minecraft is a good one at the moment they, really? they, yeah yeah minecraft uh, yeah uh, that's ages old <laughs> oh, i can't remember i can't remember which character someone there was some article claiming how this particular character in minecraft is the devil and it's 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 a way for the devil to get hold of your kids, your kids <sighs> minds, and yeah. Oh, America! Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, ah, religion. Yeah. But anyway, yeah. so uh, that's the the controversial topics. So I don't want to go into it anymore because it'll just frustrate me. <laughs> well, yeah. Um, I... um, is there any more any anything else you guys want to mention about Dungeons and Dragons? All good I mean... castles. We'll have yep. the uh, controls for the drawbridge outside the castle. <laughs> <laughs> That's where you want to put them, outside. Yep. Uh, with a key Definitely. just hanging off like on a, on a piece of paper. Um, in his defence, though, it was in case he locked himself out and he was like, <laughs> the cloud, cloud was floating away, you know. He was an old man. Venger's a bad yeah. guy. I get it. The mayor of Hel- Hel- Helix? Helix. Helix. The mayor of Helix is annoying, but why yeah. does he want the town destroyed? Did well, he? Well, yeah, that's why the dragons... That's why he wanted the dragons to destroy the town, but why? The mayor? No, Venger. Oh, Vagina. Oh. I mean, I beyond, the, I beyond the fact... Oh beyond the fact that the mayor was annoying... <laughs> and and the and the uh, the truth the oh, what do you call it? the the mystic the fortune teller was obviously voiced by a man talking like this. <laughs> I mean, the, because um, it was just is, uh, he's so evil. he's so evil. I'm going to burn the town down. Yeah, but why? Yeah. Just enslave them. It's uh, take evil. over. He's just, just going to kill everything. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that, that that bugged me. And want the, on destruction. And the big one. Um. The D, the dungeon master, is a sadistic manipulator. Yes, who could send them home whenever he wants. Mm-hmm. He knows exactly what they need to do to get home, which is why he's always dropping hints. How he always seems to know. If you go talk to this person, they might tell you how to get mm-hmm. home. He knows. He, they are there for his sick amusement. He is not <laughs> on their side. Even back in the day when I was a young child, I. He is not on their side. He is not their friend. They are there because of him. They remain there because of that short little weirdo. <laughs> I have a theory that he is actually playing a solo campaign of D and D, and he just delights in murdering all of <laughs> like I believe, delights yeah. in um playing it all. Yeah, this is why you don't do it. Don't play a solo campaign of D and D. Get the, friends. The dungeon Get master. He's obviously omnipotent. He can mm. disappear when he wants. He can summon up things when he wants. He knows everything. <laughs> he could, yeah. He could send them home. He's just a sick, twisted little bastard. Bending the rules. Yeah. Yeah. I wrote down somewhere. Um, yeah. So you're the sadistic fuck who keeps the kids trapped in a savage hell. Yeah. Oh wait, that's what I do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We don't talk about your basement. 
<laughs> Even in my games. <laughs> um, but yeah. Oh, and uh, uni socks. Oh yeah, uni socks. <laughs> Any closing thoughts, Jennifer? No. You're in love no. with um, uh, v- Vigia. Verger. Can't say it anymore. Avenger. Avenger. <laughs> um, yeah. So. I love them. It, it's Christmas. Woo! Merry Christmas. Buy our merch. It, we it, have lots of it. It's it's not too late. You can purchase no. it. You, it's, you can a late Christmas gift or a Christmas gift. It's wonderful. Buy it for us. Mm, the cereal <laughs> elves are hard at work making it for Christmas, and, um, and they made you, me this hat. See, if, it's the same colours. If you don't buy it, we'll beat them. Yeah, with um, a stick. No, we, we won't beat them. We'll transport them to a fantastical realm where they have to hunt for their lives every single day. For the rest of the next 40 years. If you have enjoyed the show, if you enjoy the content we make, you can support the show. You can buy, buy the merchandise. Or if you don't want to do that, you can just go onto our website, click on the uh, buy us a coffee link and buy us a drink. Yeah. So just just do a, it. Just a little token of appreciation would be much appreciated. Anyway. Um, um, if we get 100, 100 views, 100 likes, <laughs> 100 likes on this video, we'll stream a serial viewing D&D one shot. <laughs> Is it Hunt the Unicorn? <laughs> yes, and it, will, and it will include Uni <laughs> and the Dungeon Master. As long as I'll I make get sure a broad sword. of it. Broadsword. Yes. I'm going to come out of that with a plus two cloak of defense that's made out of unicorn skin. <laughs> <laughs> you can get the, uh, the, the bong of destiny, which is made out of the horn. Can I have a new wand make out, made out of his horn? Yeah. Yes, that, that works. <laughs> a vibrating wand. Uh, yeah, anyway. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, so yeah, so anything we, else we should mention? Uh, we're gonna uh, do we should we rate the episode? <laughs> oh, yeah, sure. <laughs> 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 that was a thing that happens. Go on, Henry. What did you rate Dungeons and Dragons as? Um, I struggled with this a little bit, so we do we do this out of 10. Um, Is because this... yeah, I have really fond memories of it and i really really enjoy it but it isn't actually what i remember <laughs> looking yep. at it looking at it now it's not it's not what i remember it being it's the the story's a lot looser the action's not as exciting it's not mm. as well animated as i said but it was uh, it came along at a time in my life where I was ripe to be influenced, and as I said before, uh, the fighting fantasy books, um, Dungeons Dragons, the cartoon. This is my first, maybe not my first exposure to Dungeons Dragons, but my first that really drew me in. This is one of my foundational experiences, one of my influences on my on my life. So, out of ten, I'm gonna give it a okay for the show. I'm gonna give it a three for my remembrance of it and the impact on life i'm going to push it up to a seven so do wait so that's a seven that's your final or are you going to do a range no no, it's getting a seven okay that's that's fair that's probably exactly what i would have expected and i could have guessed one like 100 percent, and would have been correct that that would be exactly your answer (laughs) (laughs) would be the fact that it was rose tinted goggles yeah Jennifer. Six. Six? Six? Yep. Wow. I liked it. I still still like it. it. Still Still enjoyable. It's not perfect, but there are way worse out there. So it can have six. Would would you watch it again? Yeah. Yeah. I need to go and find that episode that I remember. (laughs) Yeah. I'm just thinking I'm going to have to watch all the blooming episodes now so I can work out which (laughs) one it was that they they have to come back and they make a decision. As a... Yeah, we'll have to... Find out. Question for Jeremy: As a Dungeons and Dragons DM, which you are, yes, would you could could you possibly foresee a scenario in which you could take some inspiration from this show? Um, yeah, definitely. Like there are some elements in books and modules, so pre-written adventures for the version that we play 
that I have seen things that are similar in this episode already. Like the floating castles. Um the the villain is weak. <laughs> yep. Um heavily weak. And there there isn't much of a dungeon. Like they do go into the into the uh the castle, but that's a good guy's castle, so I mean I know it turns into a bad one. Anyway. Um yeah, I think so. I wouldn't rate it with that, just based on the fact that there are some things, but playing it as an actual whole adventure would suck. <laughs> <laughs> Unless it was like a small stopping off point. Yeah. You know. Have you, uh, just as a quick question, have you ever played, I've never been in a game where there's been that many people playing at the, playing at the same time. Uh. Have you ever done it? Have you How ever, many are there? Five? There's six. six. There's six of them. Six. Not so including got one, uni. Two. Technically, the game I play right now, one, two, three, four, five. Because Critical eight, Role, they have that many people in there. So yeah, they? they've got loads, which is Sometimes they like a bit like too eight. many. Hang on, how many have I got? Uh, two, well, Jen, three, Jen and four, I have, what are you counting? Five in your zone. Because I was talking That's to... That's the max, yeah. Jen and I were talking about that as well, because I Games Master, I don't, I don't Games Master DN. Dungeons and Dragons, but I have games lost before, and I think I would struggle with more than three, four at a push. Really? Yeah, I think any more than four, and your your people are going to get left out. Like, anyway, it does just... depend on the game you're playing. I yes. feel Dungeons and Dragons is very easy to let everybody have their position. They tried to balance it so everybody's equally important, except the ranger because they suck. Actually, uh-huh. we have we've played it with. I suppose played we've played it with five. five yeah, characters. yeah, we have. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, five. It was five. It was five. Yeah. Yeah. yeah no. Sh- yeah. Shit. Sure, we did. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. Fact, did somebody have two characters? Didn't you have two? Did me or I you didn't. have two? I think characters? you did too. Didn't there, you? I think we're mixing the ones. There was one where you did have an extra character, but then there was also the one where you played. We played with more people. Mm. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so I think it's not that bad. It depends on everybody's motivation. If everybody's up for playing and respectful to the fact that they're not the only person playing the game, then it, it works. It can work. If, if they, you get lots of people who get impatient or, you know, get distracted, then it can be irritating, but then it could be irritating with two people. You know? That's true. That is very true. So, so, <laughs> um, but right. yes, it does depend on the game. So. I apologize. Yeah. I, I interrupted you before you could give your rating. Yes, my rating. I'm going to give it a seven as well. Okay. Because uh, all the reasons you said, I thought it was okay as a show, and there are worse out there, especially at this time period. And the only thing that really let it down for me was the fact that Conan the Barbarian would have been more fun to play as a D and D game than this. <laughs> the story from the episode we watched. Yeah, it would. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that gives it a rating of 6.7 which is well done Dungeons and Dragons I thought it might be high and it was well average high <laughs> yes. uh, any closing thoughts for anyone not for me no that was it I um, think so a Merry Christmas I mean uh, love your faces <laughs> play uh, D&D Play D and D. Do it. It will make your life so much better, even if it's just once. Other but find playing... someone who's genuinely interested in it. Other role playing games, games are available. Um, but D and D is the easiest. Quick announcement from the serial viewing team: We are taking an extended break. Uh, we're taking an indefinite hiatus. We will be back. We might be back. Uh, we'll have a discussion of ourselves. So, uh, thank you very much for joining us for thirty six episodes. Uh, we really do appreciate Only it. Only that, like. <laughs> We've been it's actually quite a lot yeah it's quite a lot um we may be back uh in the future we may be back in a different form we may not be back at all but we are on a an extended break you can still reach out to us on facebook instagram um all the usual channels we will still be there yes okay so uh on that thank you jeremy for hosting today's episode you're welcome. Uh, thank you, Jeremy and Jennifer, for joining me on the so on the couch for this long. We appreciate it. Long time. Thank you very much to all our listeners for joining us. Um, 
if you would like us to do more, if you send us encouragement, we'll definitely be back. Let's put it that way. <laughs> and just as a brief aside, whoever it is that listens to the Fireman San episode every single day, <laughs> you're weird and we love you. <laughs> yes. Do it more. Do it more. <laughs> just tell us who you are. I want to know who it is that's listening to the Fireman San <laughs> episode nearly every single day. It's weird. And we, I, I, Please I, do. I, I want to know. <laughs> What is you it win about? the serial viewing loyalty badge. Absolutely. You get the Fireman Sam badge. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, it has been a lot of fun. So thank you very much. And uh, we will see you in the future. Uh, thank you, Jennifer. Thank you. Thank you, Jeremy. Bye bye. Bye bye. I've been Henry <laughs> and we've been serial viewing. Thank you and goodbye. Oh, no, it's Rask. Ranger? Barbarian? Magician? Thief? Cavalier? And acrobat? And we are done. Cool. Stopping recording. Stopping audio. Okay. Do you want the good news or the bad news? Uh -oh. did, you, did you forget to click record? Nobody told me, nobody reminded me to switch Reaper on, so I didn't switch Reaper on. I've got it open, but I didn't switch it on. What's and the good news? <laughs> the good news is I, once I realised, I tried to talk so that I wasn't interrupting so that you'll be able to snip it really easily. <laughs> I just, I was like, you, there is a point in the video, you'll, you'll see my face go. <laughs> and I was like. That Shit does mean balls. now that all three of us have done that. <laughs> Although oh, Jer yeah. Jeremy and I did it at exactly the same time. <laughs> yeah, we did. We just didn't record an episode. <laughs> 20 minutes in before we realised we weren't actually recording anything. Yeah, we were quite a long way in and I was like, oh, fuck it. Did you not shitty, hear us say we were, talk we were talking about starting the audio? Mm. No. Not paying attention? Well, so someone needs YouTube... to say, start Reaper, Jer Jenny. It's going to sound like ass. <laughs> that means I'm going to need to... Oh, editing it tomorrow is going to be such a bore. I'm going to gonna have to, in. but yeah. I can... That's still going to be in a, a, a ball ache. Unless, unless you just want to go with the the, the YouTube audio. <laughs> and do we'll you, do we'll we, find out tomorrow. Do we'll figure it out tomorrow. That. It may have to come out slightly later on Saturday as well. <laughs> Uh, did you like my intro youtube yes that was not rehearsed but painfully written i was gonna say that was <laughs> um, <laughs> yes it was obviously um, written down because you sounded like i do when i'm reading my <laughs> when i'm reading yeah. my opening bit <laughs> oh i wasn't i totally wasn't trying to sound like you you <laughs> never could that was no. a nice intro that was cool, that was cool. <laughs> thank you um, <laughs> it's Wait, obvious I... all the way through this episode that you are a massive D&D &D nerd. Yeah, that's fine. No, don't go back. Oh, there we go. Wow. This, yeah. in, this entire notebook is nothing, really? but, nothing but serial viewing. Ah. There are bits of that's paper. That's almost sad. There are bits of paper everywhere. <laughs> with serial viewing this is the first time I hand wrote the notes. Because I couldn't do keep everything open at once on my <laughs> laptop. <laughs> uh, so this was episode thirty-six, D and D. So, oh, by the way, Internet Tarask, if you don't know what it is, go look it up. I'm not going to tell you. But I don't know what it did is. Did you get? Did you at least get it, Henry? No. Yes, you did. You laughed at it. You did. did I? Yeah. I was yeah. maybe being polite. <laughs> oh, that maybe. Oh, what? I have no idea what you're talking about. That's okay. I didn't expect you to. <laughs> Tarask is like the modern version of like Tiamat was back then, which is like this creature that's everybody knows. I did. Is know like that. the super hot, super hard creature to kill. I, I didn't. It's know like Godzilla, that. but in D and D. Oh yeah. Um. So ratings, ratings, ratings. Is there any way you got ratings? I'm just, I'm just writing them now. 
I'll go first for the theme song. He gets a whopping zero because there wasn't one. Uh, Done. I'm Moving gonna, on. I'm gonna Jennifer. Give, I'm gonna give it. <laughs> no. Oh, okay. <laughs> Jennifer's first. <laughs> Three. 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 Out of yeah. out of a hundred. Oh, out of a hundred. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. no, it can have more than that. It can have twenty. Twenty three. 23 yeah 23 because i like that that bit of music in it i really like that bit of music. i didn't even like the ending credits it's getting a 25 for me uh, because i like the opening in that i like the little story it tells mm. um the music itself is quite forgettable forgettable forget forgettable thank you that word um but it was the flashback it was uh, mm. oh it's time for dinner now Oh, yeah. I need to get my stuff off the table, and so it gets twenty five. Tell you what, though. Tell you what, mine is no longer zero. It's a one because that'll really drag the average down. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it will, won't it? <laughs> I realise that a zero would do nothing. So, <laughs> oh, such a math nerd too. Uh, that gives it a theme rating of sixteen. Yeah, okay, good. <laughs> yeah, you proper dragged the average down. <laughs> I just Jeremy. hate it. Work on your damn intro. <laughs> Weirdness. Uh, For me, I first. don't think it's very okay. weird. You can go first. Me? I'm going yeah. first. Yeah, go For on. me, I, it wasn't very weird when I was a kid, and I don't think it's very weird now. I know some people might find it weird, but I didn't find it weird at all. Even Venga with his one horn. <laughs> Mm. So what are you going to give it? So I'm giving it 10. I'm going to give it 50 because I am utterly and genuinely baffled how anyone looked at that fucking unicorn and thought it was a good idea. Yeah. <laughs> I knew it was coming. So that's a 50 <laughs> for me. <laughs> no, it's not weird though, is it? It's weird that they greenlit it. <laughs> mm. Right, click, click, bang! Mm. Sorry. Okay, and Jeremy? I find it weird. Okay, so I give it a, a 38 because based, purely based on the fact that a studio looked at the show. They probably didn't even look at the show, but they just decided that they were going to end it and not give it the just desserts and so made the Dungeon Master look like an absolute creep. That's because he is and an, an absolute, absolute creep kidnapper and they decided that was okay he's a massive tool yeah and he's the worst dungeon master i've ever seen <laughs> yes he is you're right <laughs> well no he's like every dungeon master i've ever seen he gives you vague hints <laughs> doesn't really help <laughs> but he definitely fluffed with the dice somewhere oh, oh well, yeah but all dms <laughs> I, do, I do that all the time <laughs> If I want, if... no, you don't fluff with the dice. No, if the you di make it easy, super easy. If the <laughs> dice aren't doing what I want it to do, then <laughs> well, the rule of cool always wins, though. Yep, that's okay. Uh, educational value is next. Uh, don't trust creepy old dudes with white hairs. You're being lied to, people. Don't be sheep. Yeah, there is no dragon conspiracy. Oh, stupid. Because they call all the dragons dragons, but they're not dragons. They're wyvern. Do you know I didn't even look that hard? Yeah. Oh my god. Are they I know, it's super nerdy. Tiamat must be... All... <laughs> yeah, because Tiamat hasn't... doesn't. Does T... Yeah, Tiamat has front legs. Tiamat's a dragon. Technically, no, she's... Yeah, she Technically, she's... Technically, she's a hydra. Hydra, yeah. Technically, in... in the original D&D, she doesn't have front legs. Right, and she is a Hydra, but she's also a demigod. So, well, demigods that could be, demi yeah, demigods could be whatever the hell they want. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, but that's nerdy. Hang on. So, <laughs> I'm just. I'm, I'm sure it's got. Stuff. Technically, she's a demon as well. I'm gonna yeah, edit yeah. nerd alert like flashing yeah. on the screen nerd, over nerd. this bit, <laughs> just over the whole episode. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, uh, so but... I'm gonna give it an eighteen. Eighteen. Um, Jennifer. Yeah. yeah, me too. About that. Uh, well, uh, I'm going to give it a 15, just to be contrary. Uh, you? Contrary? That's like, it's not uh, like you at all. That gives a 17 for educational value, because we learned nothing. Impact, this will be interesting. Can I go first? Obviously. 100. 
Fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> really? You're going for a perfect score with this one? <laughs> yeah. I'm like, okay, the cartoon itself, okay, maybe not, but like, it it must have, it must have, right? Look, look at D&D nowadays. It's huge. It's probably like the second biggest big. <laughs> the biggest big. It's a great time to be a nerd. And it really is, yeah. Honestly, it's like the geek chic. It's everything, you know. Um. Okay, yeah, that's the reason. I'm going to give it an 88. Uh, purely for personal impact. I think this this was formative in my interests. Uh, the cartoon mm. is significantly more shit than I remember it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, yeah, I'm probably going to give it something like 85. 85? Yeah. The cartoon itself, the game... It's all been pretty impactful. Can I, can I go huge. 99 instead? <laughs> you want to? <laughs> because you're right, and I have to take that one point off for how shit the actual show was. <laughs> for the unicorn. Uh, that gives it for a new world record a rating of an impact rating of 91. Wow. Is... Everything else on the card was shit. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, with a 6.7 overall rating, is what, what it came out with. Um, it, it couldn't be anything anything but with that impact. No. Steam, it's Dungeons and Dragons, for God's sakes. <laughs> yep. Oh, it's a bit ridiculous. Everybody know Dungeons and Dragons. Everybody know Dungeons and Dragons. Um, so what are we doing next? To, uh... Uh, oh. Generally, I know there's a, we've got a few people who exclusively watch the show on YouTube. Um, if you want us to carry on, please let us know. Uh, if you don't, if you've got some ideas of shows you'd want us to watch or something else to do, please let us know. If you'd like to buy Even some- if you're not that bothered and you're a regular comment, a regular viewer, just, just comment down and just say that, you know, you are. Just just let us know you're there. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Was that you? <laughs> Um, anyway, yeah, yeah. so we're going on an extended break. Where, as I said before, we might be back. We might not be. We'll be back in one form. Well, yeah, we'll we'll be, yeah we will definitely back be in another form. Uh, we're going to stretch our podcasting legs, probably. We're going to do a cheeses of the world podcast. Hell yeah! <laughs> <laughs> Look at these little eyes line up. <laughs> cheese. You just have a new cheese every week. That's amazing. Yeah, they could be like little. They could be like little fun size size. You could do like ten minutes. Right, yeah. This is this is easy. Cheese today. size. A slice cheese of cheese. Size. Just, just slice of cheese. Slice of the day. <laughs> it's just ten minutes. Ten minutes of audio of us going. Yeah. Oh, very good that one. <laughs> Please. Uh, YouTube video. Mm. Cheese ASMR. Th- thank you. For, thank you for joining us. Next. <laughs> this is the cheese ASMR video. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know I'm gonna go I'm gonna go research and see if there's any cheese podcasts out there. I'm gonna turn my game up really loud and just go Okay guys <laughs> <laughs> Murder people. Yeah. And we'll have to find a, a member of the panel to come on who's lactose intolerant. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't wanna eat it. Yeah. Eat it. Yeah, well, you sure. give them the lactose intolerant version and see how they check. See how <laughs> Hello Crap. and welcome to the lactose intolerant version of Slice of Cheese. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> the diabetic cheese. <laughs> uh, anyway, thank Vegan you, YouTube. Cheese. We appreciate all the time you spent with us, and we will see you again in one shape or another yeah. in the future. So take one last look at these pretty faces. Until next time. We'll catch you soon. Uh, Like, comment, and subscribe. (laughs) Bye. Bye, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. I can't find the stop button. Ah. Ah.